What's up, guys? This is Ty Sasson, and welcome back to another episode. Oh, these cactuses. It is episode 8, and last time we put together a storage room at spawn for iron and made it look pretty cool. Uh, actually got pretty pretty positive feedback on it, which is good for me because I don't, I don't do well with designing stuff. But uh, in between episodes, we've done not much. Yeah, we, we didn't do a lot. But I did do some odds and ends. I organized some shulker boxes and things like that. Got some ender pearls. Uh, nothing huge. Because today we have big plans. Big, big plans. I tell you, big plans. And I didn't want to do any of it in between episodes. I want to make sure that you see what's going on. Because today we're going to reveal the base location. That's right. The base. Yes. So... Uh, I've got a little bit to do before we get there. Uh, I'm going to grab sheep, our horse, and uh, did I throw something on the ground? Um, we're going to grab sheep, who's over here, and we're going to head to spawn and pick up our beacon and uh, take that beacon with us to the new location. So let me gallop my way over to spawn real quick and I'll bring it back. Sheep, behave yourself. Um, okay, so here we are at spawn, and uh, I need to get down to the bottom of this business right here and pick up our beacon. And um, unfortunately, I'm in the position where picking up the beacon is uh, actually not just the beacon, but uh, I need to pick up the blocks too, because uh, I've used all the iron for hoppers. So let me pick this up, and, uh, and I'll start heading towards our, uh, our future base here. I... I uh, Probably won't take you on that trip. You've seen the trip before, so maybe that's a hint. Um, but yeah, let me grab this beacon and we'll we'll start heading that way. Oh sure, bring the horse. They say, yep, everybody loves a horse. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, mm-hmm. Wait, 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 wait. This is a thing? Oh, man. Did anybody else know this was a thing? This is... This is fantastic. All right, sheep, this is your home now. You, uh, you live right here, at least for now. Uh, all right, guys, we've... we've uh, yeah, there we go. We made it to uh, our our planned location here. Um, no thanks to this guy. And yeah, where where are we? Well, we are here at this hole in the ground. This very important hole. Some of you may remember, if you've been watching the series, what this hole leads to. Uh, there's a little bit of a a, a a little bit of a hint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are here at the closest stronghold. To spawn because I want to make my base here at a stronghold because I enjoy doing things in the end. I like to have lots of ender pearls, and I've always wanted a base that was close to an end portal, and I've never done that. So that's what we're going to do in this series. Our main base is going to be here uh, in this hole, or at least close to this hole. Um, let me give you a fly around here so you can kind of see what we're what we're dealing with. So we have a village right here, and there's of course big ocean over here. There's a little bit of forest and more ocean. There's a uh, yeah, nice little river running through here. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to now locate the center of the end portal. There's uh, some extreme hills over here and a cool hole in the mountain, it looks like. Oh yeah, we have to fly. We have to fly right through this. Hit the creeper. Oh, shoot. Uh, so yeah, this is, uh, this is it, guys. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to locate the center of the... Um, end portal and from there uh, we will know kind of where the center of our base is because that's going to be dead center uh, in the middle of our base and then today um, we are not going to build an entire base because my base is going to be pretty massive there's going to be loads of storage and you know different farms and all sorts of stuff centered around the end portal so <clears throat> today we're going to make the first farm, uh, which is going to be a farm that I've been wanting to make for a long time, which is a mob farm. And it's going to be awesome, and it's going to have five bajillion, thousand million, kajillion drops per second, and it's going to be amazing. 
maybe not, but it will be good and it will be hopefully fairly lag friendly and uh, will definitely suffice for what my needs are. Um, and we are going to make some chickens. There we go, three chickens for our world. And yeah, let me go locate the coordinates and then we'll, uh, we'll start the dig. Boom, we have found it. So yeah, there's, there's our, uh, our, our, uh, our, our horse named Sheep. And somewhere over here about is that hole on the ground. Village is over there. So what side do we want to mob farm on? I think actually this direction would be ideal. Yeah, I think that's it. And then three more farms are going to go on either side uh, here. So yeah, let's, let's figure out exactly where we want that to go. Um, this is, that, that should be kind of obvious, I think. That, that doesn't seem like it generates naturally. <laughs> yeah, so we want this centered on this, uh, what is this, 796. And I'm going to want a good amount of room. So let me hash out exactly where the center of this thing is. All right, I found the exact center of where I want to build the mob farm. It's uh, it's 30 some odd blocks away from the center of our end portal, which again is the center of our base. And for now, it's time to start the dig. Doug and yeah it's it's looking pretty good I uh, spent a little bit of time took a little bit of time to get this done but it's good it's uh, it's down to the center of the earth down to level five and uh, it looks pretty sweet uh, I enjoy the diamond shape so uh, I've already started kind of the next step here and uh, kind of wanted to bring you back just to show you kind of what we're doing I got a little carry away and then I was like wait I'm making a YouTube video. So let, let me show you what we're doing here. We're gonna go with a, a dispenser right here in the middle, and of course it's facing up, so it'll dispense some water, which I'm not gonna put in there quite yet. And it'll flood this whole platform because every uh, edge is seven blocks out. So what we're gonna do, we'll fill this in as a, a diamond, and then the next layer is going to have a two block gap. And it's actually two and a half because we're using slabs. And that's another dispenser that's facing up. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in an observer that's observing that. You can see the arrow is pointing down, so it's observing this dispenser, and it will power this dispenser. And basically what we're going to do, this pattern kind of looks like this, right? Here's this dispenser. We go up two blocks. We put a dispenser. We go down just like this, and we put an observer facing down. And you can kind of hear that, it's hard to hear, but you might hear that double click there that uh, will happen through powering. So basically we'll power this uh, dispenser from above. This observer will notice the change uh, in state of that dispenser and will then power this block, this air block, hit this dispenser, which gets powered, it observes, powers, etc. So that's kind of what that's gonna look like. If we did it the other way, right? If we had this facing, uh, I hope I picked that up. If we had it facing like this, 
see if I can place this correctly here. Uh, the issue is, is that it would be observing the block right here, which is where the water is. And unfortunately, water does some funny stuff. So it's going to be really hard to hear the clicking. I bet I washed away some torches too. But basically, the, the water could potentially, as it goes up and down and level, could mess with this observer and cause more than one pulse to go through. So I, I was a little concerned about that. We're going to flip it around the other way. So uh, yeah, that's kind of the next step here. Actually, I want to be down here. Uh, let me grab my observers. There we are. So yeah, the next step here is to uh, put in some of these these platforms. I'm going to put in probably around I don't know seven, eight, nine, somewhere in that range. Uh, and yeah, once I get that done, we'll we'll work on the next part, which is going to be how we collect our future items. All right, the platforms are completed. And they look pretty sweet. I think I got 10 in. And ooh. Yeah, there's, there's about 10 up there. Um, I made sure that the top one is still in the same subchunk as other ones. So I could potentially build one more, but I, I think we're good. So uh, down here, basically what we need to do, uh, this block, it's kind of hard to tell, but there are three blocks of room. So we're going to place magma blocks here and I'll actually probably even bring them in one more block. So uh, basically the armored mobs may fall down onto this and maybe the, the fall damage may not kill them. So the magma blocks will take care of the rest. And then underneath that we're going to place some track. So I, I've kind of laid this out in a testing world and we're going to need to take out a little bit of room on each side. And this is actually, it's fairly difficult to, you know, lay out a track for this. So we're going to end up covering this whole bottom area uh, with track. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to bring in a track here, right? And I'm going to use powered rails. Of course, I've got all of my gold with me and a little bit what do I have? 55 power rails, but we're going to bring this over like this and then we're going to actually make it turn outside of those three blocks because that turn, it's possible that it's possible that it could, you know, end up missing an item. So, so what we'll do is we'll actually bring that turn right here and that way it's not going to miss any items that are laid down, right? So then we'll bring it back and make it turn this way actually and bring it all the way back. So with the middle one, I think I'll have it unload on both sides. There's going to be probably a total of maybe six unloading stations. So when this brings uh, itself all the way to the end here, we'll have it unload over on this side. Uh, I am actually out of track. There we go. So we'll have it unload here. Right, right about here, maybe a block over. And it will also lo unload on the other side. All of the rest of them are going to kind of come up and then go back and then come up. And I'm just making a mess. But uh, it's going to be kind of an interesting pattern. It, it, I want to make sure that every block is covered and that we aren't missing any drops. But I also want to make sure that these minecarts are getting back and forth and unloaded prior to drops uh, despawning. So uh, it's a bit of a challenge. And I think that I have a layout that's going to work for that. So. Um, yeah, let me let me get this laid out here so that way we've got a, a, an idea of what it's going to look like and uh, we'll we'll hopefully run a test today. But uh, I need to get this laid out and need to get the redstone up there figured out as well. So a little bit more to do before this thing can uh, can kill some mobs. All right, here's the deal, guys. We've got the rails in, but I'm not super stoked on the the layout of them. So we've got three unloading stations on each side. This rail in the middle actually unloads on both sides because it takes a little bit longer to get over. I think that it's going to work out just fine. I just I feel like it's it's not as efficient as I'd like it to be. Um, I spent some time in a creative world trying to determine uh, whether or not I could figure out a zigzaggy pattern that would kind of just go underneath the edge and yeah, I didn't really come up with anything. So. Uh, this is what we're going to go for with for now uh, until I oh it 
Did it pick up some rails? Uh, we're going to go with this for now until I uh, hash out a different design. But we're, we're in a good spot. We've got the unloading stations created um, all but one. I wanted to put one together with you so that way you could see how to make it. It's very easy. So what we need is these items and I'm going to use stone brick. So there's a hopper here and this is where the uh, minecart is going to stop and we don't want it to stop if it's empty of course and we want it to stop and unload all of its items if it's not. So we're going to put a comparator here and it's going to compare if any items are going into this hopper. When this hopper is empty the minecart will leave, right? So if there's something in here it'll power the comparator, power this block, unpower this torch and it will then unpower this repeater and unpower this block which means this rail will no longer be powered so yeah really really easy nothing special to be done but uh, we are going to do something kind of cool so minecarts have a, a bit of a problem in that they like to stop on tracks sometimes when you unload chunks and since this is at our base it's very possible that i might leave our base and every once in a while one of these will get stuck and considering that we're putting the floor the killing floor at this level it's going to be really difficult to uh, restart them so what we're going to do ultimately is there's going to be a control room that controls the mob farm uh, somewhere in our base which i believe is it's this direction over here so there'll be a control room it'll be several blocks up uh, wherever the end portal is it'll probably be in that same on that same level there and basically we'll be able to look in and flip a, a switch and actually stop the minecarts and the way that we're going to do that is by powering uh, the block that the redstone torch is on so let me grab a repeater and i'll show you really quickly so um, regardless of whether this is unloading or not unloading basically what we're going to do is we're going to power this block and override what's going on over here so the comparator won't matter anymore it takes it out of the picture since i'm powering this block this unpowers and yeah it'll go back over here unpower the rail and whether the minecart's here or it's coming either way it's going to end up stuck uh, about here actually it usually stops around half the block but it'll get stopped there and we'll be able to uh, not worry about the minecarts getting stuck so that's going to be uh, something that i'll hook up probably in next episode and we'll also hook up a, um, a way to actually turn off the farm as well. So yeah, really good stuff. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the floor in. Uh, again, it's going to be at about this level, uh, or not about, but actually exactly that level. And from there, what we'll do is we'll send the minecarts on their way after we set up some redstone. And then we'll hang out right here or right over there in that little area and we will watch this thing go into action so so just a couple things left to do and then we'll we'll be producing some drops uh, i also need to grab some water buckets and put those in so yeah i think the next step is the floor and then redstone then buckets and oh, oh yeah the progress the progress is fresh so i have completed the ceiling put water buckets in all the uh the dispensers and uh, I've completed the floor, which is down there. So yeah, that looks pretty cool. We're actually going to, at some point, uh, leave some torches on all of these. So that way they, they absorb some light levels. Uh, magma blocks will hold on to those light levels. I don't know if that lasts forever or not, but um, definitely going to do that because that's uh, more than 15 blocks away from the, the bottom spawning platform. So it can light be lit and glow down there and all that. So uh, I've also gone ahead and built some redstone. This is just a simple hopper clock. Uh, in case you're wondering, there are 22 items in there and I've got a lever here to turn it off. So when I flip this, we should see water flood all of these platforms, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Yes. That's looking good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's fantastic. So there's only one thing left to do, which is close this up properly and go down and see whether or not we have mobs dying. Now, I've not done any cave lighting, so uh, it's not going to be super efficient until I, I do that. But uh, I'll probably do that maybe in between episodes. Hopefully I have enough slabs. Uh, but yeah, we have our ooh, lighting lighting updates. Um, so this is our little control room for now, but I'll actually uh, make an adjustment to this in the future where I'll actually be powering the block that's below this piston to turn it off or on. And I've got our kind of temporary storage down here as well. So um, 
all temporary. Well, we're gonna do much better, but I need to needed to get it going, and uh, I have a need for some drops. I only have 22 rockets, and I really am completely out of gunpowder, completely, totally. So uh, hopefully our station over here is working properly, and hopefully we'll see some mobs drop here. Uh, again, uh, ooh, it looks like we might have some light there, which is concerning. Yeah, we might. I wonder if that's lighting glitches or not. All right, guys, I did a quick relog, and it, it was a lighting glitch, not a not light leaking through anywhere or torches that somehow got stuck to a surface that didn't get washed away. Uh, I did come down here uh, beneath the bedrock and I uh, just wanted to kind of quickly check on these guys. I actually uh, realized I have an extra minecart and hopper in my inventory because uh, I put two two minecarts on the center tracks, which there's a loading station on either side, an unloading station. So, uh, yeah, only needed one. I, I threw one on both. Uh, everything seems to be working out just fine down here now, though. So, uh, this thing has been running for just a couple minutes. Let's take a look at what we have. Yeah, a little bit of stuff. I managed to pick up some bones myself, nothing too much. There's definitely a major opportunity here, and that is to light up some caves. Uh, you know, although. Occasionally, we're seeing some enemies that are, are falling. You know, there's definitely uh, some some opportunity here. Um, lots of bats. I've made myself a bat spawner as well. Uh, I'm working on lighting up this uh, this magma block area. Yes, and uh, yeah, I think I think this thing will still uh, really start rocking and rolling once we get the uh, the area lit up. So let's let's check really quickly over here. Uh, magma blocks. Oh yeah, put magma blocks on the floor, Tyler. That's a great idea. Everybody, uh, everybody likes magma. Uh, let's take a look over here. Uh, yep, we got a little bit of gunpowder. This is kind of the major goal as of this moment. But you know, things like bone and um, even string and arrows, those things are are super useful. And I don't have a supply of them right now. So yeah, we're seeing these things in motion. Uh, obviously, it sounds like we got some more zombies dying out here. So yeah, I think things are working pretty good uh, for right now, considering that I've done basically no cave lighting. So. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're looking looking pretty great. Uh, I think the next step for me is to explore the stronghold a little bit more and find any other caves or anything like that that I haven't already. So that's that's going to be kind of the thing. So, but for now, I think it's going to be about it. Can I get in the right view? Yes, I can. Uh, like I said, in between episodes, I'm going to be doing some cave lighting. I'm going to be probably putting together a little bit of plans as to where our control room is for this mob farm and how that kind of fits into the base. I've got a bit of an idea of uh, what the structure is going to be like, but I'll hash that out as well. And uh, yeah, in the meantime, thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the episode, leave it a like and subscribe, 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 subscribe. Uh, I'll see you next time, guys. This has been Ty Sasson, and I'll see you in the next episode. Meanwhile, across town, in this less than fashionable cubbyhole of the San Francisco Examiner, these editors are programming today's copy of the paper into that same Ohio computer.